Hey everybody, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Gail Singer, founder and president of Circle Lighting and just wanna thank everybody for, for coming. We have over 300 people attending, which is amazing. So thank you Zoom for also making this possible. Couldn't have done that if we were just in a, in a showroom. So that's very exciting as well. Today, um, we're gonna be talking to DJ Carey, who's the editorial director of Connecticut Cottages and Gardens and Matt, Matthew Patrick Smythe. Matthew is an A-list interior designer and author. We'll be discussing his new book, Hot Off the Presses. I'm so excited that I was able to score one through a designer's eye, a focus on interiors. So I am, uh, we're going to get started and I'm gonna hand this over to DJ and Matthew. And also please feel free to submit any questions that you may have at the bottom of the screen and we will try to answer as many as possible. And additionally, we will be gifting the book to the first 50 people who have registered and also attended. So be looking for this book in your mail. So without further ado, DJ, take it away. Thanks, Gail, and thanks Circa Lighting. You know, you're an important partner to Cottages and Gardens and all of our titles, and you're even more important to the design trade because you're such a great resource in terms of technical information and just beautiful, beautiful pieces. So I'm thrilled to be talking, and I wish we were in your showroom, but I'm so excited <laughs> because you have a new showroom in Connecticut, which thrills yes. me, so I will be there soon. But Excellent. I'm, I'm so happy to, to be here today. And hi, everyone. Uh, if you haven't heard of Matthew Patrick Smythe, get ready because he has just produced. DJ, I think you muted yourself. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm back. Um, so I'm thrilled. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Circa. Thank you for everything. Matthew, thank you for coming today and speaking with me. Um, I think that this is one of the few design books that I actually read from cover to cover. I was amazed with what I learned about you, even though I thought I knew you. And I love the fact that you really wove three art forms together in this book. It was your love of theater, your love of photography, and your love of design. And it was, it's really interesting how you told the stories of each of the projects in this book. And one of the mechanisms that I loved were the um, individual photographs that you took and they informed the bigger picture. And it's interesting how that affects how you look at another image. So I, I wanted to start with, when did you start taking pictures? Well, I started taking pictures actually in high school and uh, wow. I was a self-taught photographer. And um, for a while there, I thought I was gonna be a photographer, um, but I went just, I was a theater major first at school in college and then I switched to business. Um, and then it toyed with the idea of going back to photography, but, um, so, but I was still taking pictures um, and then I fell on, I actually stumbled on interior design as a, as a career. I did, it wasn't in my, it wasn't on my roster of things to, to do in life. And um, so when I, so when I did, when I start, started it, I sort of put the camera down about 25 years ago and just had point and shoots, but it wasn't until really the iPhone came around and then I started taking pictures with it, you know, for clients, finding antiques and things like that. And then realizing my pictures had to be a little bit better than just, you know, okay. just take, yeah. sending it. So but I, so. Uh, but I also love the fact that on, on your Instagram account, the images are majestic. They're really beautiful. And I do encourage designers out there to follow you on Instagram because it's really wonderful what you choose to put up on your account. Well, you know, I, I edited it closely and I just, you know, I thought, you know, as a designer, when, if I present a photograph, I want it to be the best I can do. And, so let's um, talk about your new house that I've been dying to get into in Connecticut. So well, what, drew, what drew you to this house? Because it's very different for you. Very different. I, I, I was living previously in, in 1790 
house in Sharon, Connecticut in the village, which, which you covered. I loved. Thank you. And um, I loved it too. I mean, I really, I still love it thinking back, but um, it was, you know, I, I was always toying with looking at real estate just as a project or, you know, as a, something else to do. Um, I saw this the ad for this house quite a few times over the couple of years and it just wasn't in the price range I would think about. And then, but I was, I was drawn to the, the bones of the house. I, I could see that it needed a lot of work, but um, the price, one Saturday morning, the price dropped significantly. So I called my friend, Elise Harney Morris, and I said, what's, what's the story? So she told me it was an estate situation and that he had left to do his caretakers and um, they wanted, it was time to sell. So I went over to see it that on a Saturday morning, uh, similar weather today. So it was, everything was beautiful outside. And uh, I bought it that afternoon. Wow. But the idea that I was going, I always wanted to take a ranch and see what I could do with it because I grew up up, upstate New York in the land of ranch houses. So um, it was always like something, a, a challenge I wanted to give myself. So with this house, I just thought, okay, I'm either going to fix it up and sell it or maybe move in here. I wasn't sure. So about three quarters way through, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm moving here. So I love the, the views from this house. And yeah this open space in the living living and dining area is that correct you yep, you, yep, yep, yep. Spaces. Um, you did something interesting you can't see it in these images but in the book and you everyone should buy the book uh there's a little alcove that you created right to why right behind the mask well that's there's there's a sofa that's inside there and i actually that was when i bought the house you walked that was the entrance hall and you walked right into the middle of the living room and I didn't like that. So I created this alcove where you had to walk around, adding a little bit of sort of mystery and a little bit more of a, of a, a space you can get to before you walk into the big open space. And I, I'm sorry you don't have that picture there because that, that sofa there facing the view is really spectacular. And you created it just so people can really take in the view. Exactly, exactly. And I spent a lot of time in this room. You know, even though it's a dining table at the end, I work there all, almost every day, um, even though I have another, an office. but. Um, I, I tend to spend the mornings there and um, I read the newspaper there. It's, 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 so I use the room quite a bit. Besides, uh, what other structural changes did you make to the structure? It, well, this picture right here, this is the room I'm actually sitting in. That was the garage before. Oh, that, wow. Yeah, and so those three windows was, was, the, was the garage door and every, everything's different. There's nothing, you know, when I show the before and after pictures, it's, you know, it's, um, it's quite dramatic. And I mean, that, now when I look back at the before pictures, I thought, what was I thinking? Why did I, you know, I mean, everybody thought it was crazy. Bought it. I didn't think a I was- a bachelor uh, pad with shag rugs? Yeah, he was, he was a very beloved airline pilot for Pan Am. And he was, you know, if, this, if these walls could talk, it was just it was really sort of Playboy magazine, shag carpets, jacuzzi, everything. And, so. and let's now move on to the palette. You really restricted yourself to only what, three colors? There's barely three. There's a, there's um, like a white dove on the walls, and but the, the strong color that's running throughout the house, that dark color, is Benjamin Moore's Notre Dame, huh. which I've been using a lot lately. I have to find a new color, but it's been, it's been I love that color because it's not it's neither here nor there. It's, some people see green in it, so it has that dark bronze look occasionally when the light yep. hits it, or, or it looks charcoal. It keeps changing with with the light. I know you travel a lot and you find interesting pieces, but going back to that previous shot there was chairs there where did you find those chairs i actually found them in, not far away at the rhinebeck antique shop and they were uh, <laughs> which i'm sorry i'm not going to admit that's not going to happen this year but i know it, it was but it, those are just from an upstate new york country club and and the original green sort of you know this fake leather so but i'm sitting in it now it's quite comfortable i, I love them they're they're great looking yeah in every, everything has a story. You know, I don't, I don't really buy anything just for the sake of buying it. So right. you know, like when I deal with antiques with clients, I love the idea of shopping around because years later we have stories about where we found things and where we had lunch and where, you know, yeah. and who dealer was, it's, you know, it adds, it, that's what's nice about working with pieces like this is that, you, you know, you develop a sense of history with your client. But are you still shopping with your clients? I've heard that designers aren't really doing that anymore. I'm not shopping with them, but I am sending them pictures of lots of Okay. Things. Okay. All right. Um, and this is your bedroom. Again, it's that deep color, deep um, color wall. on the walls in there. And then, and, and, and it's just filled with things that I, that I like. I still, you know, I, one thing about doing this house is I have to edit myself and not get too, too much, you know, I, cause I can, I can easily fill this up. 
and I, I, so I have to control myself, but I still leave spaces like those night tables where I can put some things that I love to look at. Now like tell, me, tell me about how you do these tableaus because everyone panics about well, you know, it's, Yeah, it's, these are just basically things that remind me of places where I've been. Um, I tell people you don't necessarily have to buy, like if you're traveling to a country, you don't necessarily have to buy the thing you, about, that reminds you about the country there. So occasionally I find things that are Turkish here in the United States that remind me of my trip to Turkey. Oh, so, great idea. Doesn't necessarily have to, you, you should take the pressure off when you're traveling and just, unless you stumble on something. But, you know, the, that one piece, the elephant reminds me of my trips to India and um, North Africa and things like that. So it's all, it's, it's all um, things that catch my eye that I love looking at. And like I said, I don't, I don't pick out anything just for the sake of it. You know, I have to really like it. I have to get some sort of um, thrill about looking at it. So. Well, there, oh, and I love this bathroom space. And you say in the book that the views from here are really spectacular. What's nice about living in the woods, I don't necessarily need a window treatment. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's only good. out there, so it's not, you know, it's not a big deal. So, um, and I use that same color. This is um, my partner's office. Which is beautiful. And I love the fact that you kept the ceiling white, and but yeah. you accented those beams. It's exactly. Well, you so know, this is, what they called a deck house. It was a group of architects who did these prefab houses in the 70s. Oh, the acorn houses. Exactly, that's where they are now. And yeah. so it was, it was all a lot of wood. It hadn't, been, it hadn't aged well, just because of the nature of the house, not, not because of the, the architects. But um, so, it, you know, it, it was time to re rethink it. So this, oh, look at that view on your deck. That's gorgeous. Uh, and what's nice, you know, what's nice about this view is that even in the winter when the leaves go, I have a spectacular clear mountain view all the way around. So it's really nice. But, you know, I've been living in village houses most of my life, you know, it, so it's, it was nice. To, this is a different experience for me. You went really out in the country. And for all of you who are, chime, uh, who are in the Zoom, I just wanted you to uh, let you know that the November issue of Connecticut Cottages and Gardens has more of Matthew's home in Connecticut. So we just try to whet your appetite so <laughs> stay tuned so moving along um can you tell me how you came up with the smaller images that you chose for the book like what was your thinking when you chose these images well you know i, I knew what projects were going to go in the book so so i was sort of trying to tie them in with some of the images that i knew we, were, we had photographs of but they don't necessarily they're not you know, necessarily directly involved with right, the project. Okay sort of mood board and nothing else. There are things that possibly could have influenced me by, you know, things I've seen in the past. So that's, that's why I sort of line them up this way. But, um, and it's, it's mostly a lot of things to do with travel. And, um, and this is Central Park on the lower, the lower corner there and then Versailles in the middle. And so it's, you know, it's, it's and Hudson, New York on the, in the middle on the top. So it's not, it's not necessarily far away. It's just, just things that catch my eye during the day, any day, any given day. So, I love this house and this is a foyer, but I love the fact that this is a brand new house. So how do you make a brand new house look like it has a history? Well, luckily the, the client loves um, good architecture. She has you know, a traditional bent and, and she loves beautiful furniture. And so it was, it was great working with her on this, but it's, it's about adding the correct moldings, the correct detailing back to the house that could have been there. We, we're, not, we're not trying to fool anybody to think that this right. is an old house. We're just trying to give it the best care we can as far as scale and, and proportion. And then this is the same house, but I love the fact that you chose this medium dark palette. And why was that? Well, this room, you know, this gets very good sunlight in the afternoons. So it's, I wasn't worried about it getting too dark if, if somebody oh. wanted to do it in the day. But it's mostly used at night. I would say 90% of the time this room is used at night. And, and um, is it so? Did you design a lighting system that so that the room would look good during the day and at night? And how often do you think about that when you're designing a room? Well, I think about it all the time. I think about you know how how do people want to use this room? How do they want to look in the room? Um, you know, what's the purpose of the room? So in this case, you know, it's mostly a nighttime room with their friends coming over for drinks or be pre dinner or you know getting together, but. So I wanted, you know, I really relied on lamp light for this room and sconce light because there's something very, I still love it, an old fashioned lamp. You know, you, you know, of course, you know, we do a lot of ceiling lights, but there's nothing better than a, a, the, the glow you get from a lamp. 
Yeah, and it's lower, you know, it's closer to you. So it has that romantic sex appeal right. to it. Exactly, and it's very inviting. And um, usually everybody looks good in, those, in that way. I, I, this is still the brand new house that looks amazingly old, but beautifully aged. And there's patina in the room. So how did you achieve that in the oh, new house? Sure. Well, we, a lot of it had to do with the pieces that we chose. Um, as far as the tables and chairs, we, we, we still have some contemporary pieces here. Like, in, like the, these chairs are from Rudin and um, I had that the banquette made, but it's, it, you know, it's about pick, t pick, picking pieces that already have their own patina to, to them or, or a sense of, a sense of place. Now so, that, that lighting fixture over the dining table, it looks like it's an exterior light or am I in? Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, that was, that's an Irish fixture. And um, I picked it because it was casual. This is the this is sort of the breakfast room. Okay. There is another dining room that has a you know a, a more formal chandelier in it. But this is I love this room because and I just, I didn't want anything that that formal in this room. And um, so that's that's why that's why we chose that fixture. I'm in heaven in this room because I love the fact that you made something so pretty. You know, people are afraid to do pretty. Now I'm a girl that loves pretty. So I saw this picture and I went crazy. You know, it was so nice. It was so nice to do pretty again. You know, I, I came into work in, in the eighties, and we were all doing pretty back then. Exactly. <laughs> it was so not pretty. Um, so, you know, that's where that's where my roots were, and it just it was so nice to deal with beautiful with flower flowers, but also balance it out with some neutral tones, so it wasn't too too heavy. But um, I like the fact that you also talk about this pillow in the book because it's a nod to craftsmanship, and you know. Yeah. You have a love of the craftsman's hand in all of your spaces. Can you talk right. about why? Well, you know, it's just, that's, that's the difference between, that, that, that's what makes a room unique. That's what adds the quality to a room. Um, in, each, in, in my book, in each chapter, I try to, to take one piece. There's, there's the last page in each chapter. It's usually focused on one piece in the apartment or the house and it talks about why we picked it or, wow. you know, and what it, what, it, what, what it meant to the client and um, how we found it. In this case, this was a, um, this is Rebecca Vizard from Louisiana who does these beautiful pillows. And um, she found this cloth in Istanbul and, and it was originally part of a bigger cloth that they used to take and wrap um, their goods in, whether it's vases or plates and travel with them. So wow. she found this piece and she took the embroidery off them and mounted it on a, on a new piece of velvet. So it has a whole new life again and, and a history and a, and a story. Yeah, and it's unusual. You don't see it everywhere. And you're not, you're not going to see it again. You're not, you're not going to see this anywhere else because there's, there's only one. And that's, that's the nice thing about working with unique things like antiques or old fabrics. And, you know, you add something that not everybody can have. That's what you bring to the table is this sense of uniqueness. Again, your beautiful imagery. I love this stuff. I spent a lot of time staring at all these images. <laughs> Well, you know, when I started the Instagram, I didn't, you know, very, very, up until now with my book, there's very few of my interiors on Instagram uh, that I post. I noticed. <laughs> yeah, it's just, because I felt, I felt this, this can help, you know, this could, this is, this is where it all comes from, whether the room, the room is fine, but um, this is sort of. Your inspiration. Yeah, exactly. This is where it all starts. This townhouse was amazing. It's in New York but it looks like a very tight area. And then I saw this beautiful chandelier. And what's interesting to me is that people panic about the length, the height, the yep. width of a chandelier in a foyer. It, it's either right or it's not. And this is perfect. So can you talk about how to deal with the chandelier and how to figure out what would work and what wouldn't? Well, so, so often with lighting fixtures, especially hanging fixtures, you want to just, you want to, do you, do, you want the, do you want the hanging fixture to be the first thing you notice when you walk in your room? Usually not. So, um, but you don't want it to be so skimpy that it doesn't relate to anything else there. So in this case, this chandelier worked perfect, lighting fixture worked perfectly because we have this narrow space that's sort of, and this round effect, and it's, it was a very vertical as with the staircase. And um, in, what's nice about also dealing with, you can borrow something and hang it up and see what it looks like. You know, you, that's yeah. the nice thing about takes, and that's what I love about doing with pieces like this. But, in, you know, but anybody could pick something like this. It's just about, it's about a sense of scale. And, um, you know, every, every space is different. That's what's interesting about working with, with you know, you, you never know what you could, obstacles you're going to come across, but, and that was perfect. What, is, what inspired the design of this space? 
Well, we'll get to it later. I mean, we, we, the color scheme came off a painting okay. that her fa that her father um, found in the '60s in, in Paris, and okay. a, pa a, pa a painting of an owl. So we weren't really we didn't match that, but we knew that was that was the first thing we knew it was going to go into our room. So I can't say we we didn't match colors to it, but subconsciously that worked its way into everything. That painting over the over the fireplace. Yeah, I love that owl shot, but I also love the fact that you talk about. A pole, uh, that all the new upholstery that you put into the spaces in this townhouse in New York, that you had the same upholsterer make it. And I'm just wondering whether you could talk about why that's so important. Well, but it's, some of the pieces like the sofa in the, in the previous shot belonged to her mother. Oh, and, okay. and she had it made at Anthony Lawrence Belfair mm -hmm. years ago. And I use well, Anthony Lawrence Belfair, you know, this is one of my go to, favorite go to sources. So I just thought, well, you might as well keep the same hand on everything. So and they were going to reupholster it for us. And it just, it just felt very natural to give, to keep it all in house. It, it, because it's the first time I've heard a designer talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, look at this chandelier. This is a piece of <clears throat> art. It's beautiful. That's, that, uh, that's by Jacques Jarry. It's for the Valerie Goodman Gallery in New York. And he's a French artist. And what's interesting about that piece, if you, if you unfolded, you know, unraveled it, and pressed all those arms down, it's one sheet of brass. Wow. So it's like a piece of rectangle of brass and it's just cut into strips. And then he molds the strips to form the chandelier arms. Very cool, very cool. One of my uh, favorite. And uh, again, and that's, you're in the same room? Excuse me? The, the same, the same, same room. The space. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a piece, that's a piece her mother had. I love working with, when clients have nice pieces that they love, um, that reminds them of their families. I mean, I love working that into a, into a space. And you're not opposed to it. I mean, some designers like to start new, but it, it, these people definitely had an eye and had a fabulous art. Yeah, and yeah, she, yeah they, they have a very good eye and they, they, they know nice furniture. So it's, it's, it, was, it, was a, it was a privilege to work with it. And I love the fact that you added art in the kitchen. Yeah, so, they, yeah, yeah they, 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 she, she actually had that painting and then these Cabousier prints, we've, I was doing a lecture in Nantucket and um, there was, it was during an antique show and there was a dealer mm -hmm. from London with those prints. When wow. I walked in, I, I hope, I knew my client would be at that lecture. So I, thought, so I thought, I hope she sees these prints. And then when I was done with the lecture, she said, I have to come show you some prints that went. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it's great. It was a story to something, so which is fun. Again, I love I love your black and white. Why are you inspired by black and white photography? Well, you know, it's just sometimes it, it's the, it's the mysterious. And it's like some of these are color actually, but it just it just has oh. that great effect. But yes, they're they're more or less black photography, black and white photography. The one in the middle on the lower one is actually is Los Angeles. Wow, it looks like it's in Europe. Yeah. I know it's shot over the Chateau Marmont, and that's you can oh. see the LA skyline in the background in the haze. But in the haze, yes. The, but um. Um, yeah, this, this was a fun, this was really fun. This was something I did at the last minute. This was, I don't know if people remember the Holiday House, Show House. Um, I did this for um, Schumacher and Traditional Home. Wow. And it was, beautiful. it was fast. I, 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 I got a call from the editor and she said, I have it, I need a favor. We had this room, it's our 25th anniversary room and it was Schumacher's 125th anniversary. And the person's dropped out at the last minute. We're going to press in the morning. Will you do this room? I didn't even know what room it was. Oh my God. So, um, so I, I, I slept, can I sleep on it? And I just thought, they've been good to me. Sure, I'll do it. So, and, and I had the best time on it. It was really so much fun. Well, you talk about the fact that there are a couple of, the, you had furnishings from different periods, but they were all your favorite periods. So can you tell uh, us so what your favorite periods are? I love Regency furniture. I've always had. That's one of those things when I worked for that I was always attracted to. So there's the consoles on each side of the sofa or Regency and then the, the chairs from David Duncan Antiques. And, um, but then I have a mid-century modern piece that the Ed Wormley chair right there in front of the fireplace is one of my favorite chairs. I think it's so beautiful. And you also added sculpture into this space. In mm -hmm. Well, I have this plaster of Lafayette, which I still, I still ha I have my own copy of that right here. And, um, and this, this piece I love, it's a Japanese artist. I can't, I can't remember his name, but um, I found that at the very last minute. I bought it and I own it. So that's it's mine. gorgeous. It has a lot of movement. It does. That was, that was a lucky find. That's the nice thing, you know, you go out and you never know what you're going to find. 
Right. You know, sometimes you nice. come back empty handed and sometimes. Sometimes it's, you know, all it takes is one piece. That's my motto, you know, but uh, this is color and this is everything from 42nd street to Mumbai. Yeah, so, it's gorgeous. I love the energy of these images. You know, when I worked for David Easton, one of the things I took, took away from working with him is the sense of having to travel as a designer and having to see things in person and um, experience it firsthand. And I think with the, inst with the, with the iPhone too, it, it's, it, it's very immediate and you have to be constantly aware if you, if, because it's, these, pictures, these pictures disappear fast because it ch everything changes. They move, people move away, right. the lighting changes. And so it's been really good for me. It's, it's been a great exercise. Talk about this, uh, talk about drama in a room, because I think that um, this space, this Soho space has a lot of drama. So yep. talk about it, Yeah, well, you know, I do think that there are spaces that, and, and times where a sense of theater or drama can come into play and, and make it, especially a vast space, more, more interesting. And, you know, you want to sometimes stick with more bolder choices than usual. Mm. And, um, and, and contrasts. And, uh, but at the same time, you know, there's a lightness to it. I, you know, I really believe in a solid furniture plan and to keep everything organized. And then I add on top of that. So that's what, um, and, you know, the these art, are- The artwork is, is rather large scale. Yeah, this, well, this piece on this wall, that's the, Peter Marganelli, who's one of my favorite photographers, he, he shot that in Mumbai years ago, many years ago. And he had, it was through a, a closed photography studio and this was and it had, it had been closed for years and there was a little photograph there and it was covered in cobwebs and he shot it through the window and he showed it to me and i said i want to i want to work with this so we blew it up to and, and separated it into nine images and it's, and each it was nice but each image on its own could be a separate piece it just it's just one of those magic photographs that that works so well and um a, luck, a lucky find i was just going through his archives no, it, it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. And here's the, the piece again, but I love that this image talks about the palette of this room. And going back to your original pictures where red was like a little note everywhere in those images that it's, you see it now in this vignette. Mm -hmm. And this is, yeah, so, and then, <clears throat> then this room here, this, this dining oh. room, is what they call a bonus room, which means nothing. <laughs> That's a great bonus room, I can tell you. <laughs> you know, but it was just, you know, three walls with, with uh, no window. And so I, I decided to do this courtyard effect by taking Schumacher wallpapers and doing, you know, carefully um, with a very good wallpaper hanger, develop yeah. these various um, elevations with him. And, uh, and, 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 up, and, you know, and, and driving up the drama a little bit with the chandelier and, and the, the scale of the chairs and, how do you not make that pattern look too busy? Because some people would say, no way. I, well, if you, if you look at the pattern and you look at everything from the pattern on, everything else is very solid and, and okay. quiet. So, you know, even those columns are, um, you know, with the ebony columns and then the, 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 the velvet on the chairs. It's, it, you know, I'm, I'm not, in this case, I'm not doing pattern on pattern on pattern. It's just the walls are the pattern and everything else is neutral. Got it. It gives it air. And this bed, you, how did you create that headboard? Well, I've, I've, I had seen this piece in Ken Connecticut Artifacts and it was just in pieces in, 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 the, in the warehouse back there. And I've always had my eye on it. And then when I had to do this space, I remembered it. So I went back to look at it and I realized, you know, this could really work well here. What was it, a doorway or? It was a doorway. Okay. And I, and I, so I, <clears throat> I put the pieces back together on the wall and then I added gray mirror inside because regular mirror would be too jarring and too much information. So it's a, it's a gray mirror back there. And um, it, it's beautiful because it adds an unexpected depth yeah. to that space, you know? And that's one, that's one of my carpets from Paris and Flynn Martin. Oh, nice plug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this was the, uh, you know, the, the office. Tell me what that desk is made of. Well, it's actually, I, it's a steel drum that was cut in half. So I took the two pieces and I made an S curve. And then, oh, wow. and then Alpha Workshops made the top for me. And it's it, really it's, interesting. And so I have this lacquered grass cloth on top of this steel, raw steel piece. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice contrast. And it's, it's circular versus rectangular, which is so nice. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, this room, I, I got to just tell you, this room has, has me because I love the, the value of that color. And it's so rich without being in your face. And in the book, you talk a lot about balancing the wow. Well, you know, it, you know it, I think some materials almost have too much wow. It's like every piece is crawling out, calling out for attention. And I, and I love the balance. I love the quiet moments mixed with stronger moments. And then, so this case, in this case, um, you know, we have the artwork is very powerful, which start, you know, starts off trying to find a good background for, for, the, for the artwork. But this client has beautiful pieces too, that to work with. And then like, this is her grandmother's piece. Wow. And, yeah, I love it was, the saturation of yeah. that color. But and, it's, uh, it's not jarring. And I love this. How do you light art? Do you actually work with a art consultant or yeah, light consultant for that? Well, yeah, def definitely. You know, I know about lighting, but you know, lighting keeps changing. And I also feel as an interior designer, you can't know everything. You know, I think we're like movie directors. We can <laughs> we, we hire the best actors and writers and and uh, lighting people and cinematographers, but we we have to let them do the best thing. So I really feel with lighting, I'm very happy to turn that over to somebody I trust, especially in this case because this has to be perfect this has to be you know there's no there's no guesswork with lighting something like this so are we seeing natural light in this with a, a little bit coming from the side room but mostly it's not mostly it's interior. Oh. Mm -hmm. so you have to light it so you appreciate it all times of the day and night yeah well oh, there's that irish green we love matthew oh, i know right <laughs> Oh, this, this story I love because it was a couple who decided to work together to create an incredible house with your help. And it's got to be interesting to work with a couple who are just starting together, like how to guide them into creating a look that suits them and they're happy with. Yeah. Well, it was, it was interesting to work with them and they, they have, they have a very good eye to begin with. So that, that was great. And, um, and this, like this color style, you know, she, this, these are colors that she's always loved. She dresses with these colors. They're just colors that she's always been attracted to. So it was about bringing the right fabrics to her within that range. And they were open to ideas. I, you know, I, I remember he, he, gave, he gave me the best line. He's a very, you know, important businessman. And he said, so I was showing him a scheme. He said, okay, sell it to me. <laughs> because I, I'm not sure I like it. Sell it to me. So she I love that challenge. And I, and I got up there and I just sold it. And he says, okay, good, we'll do it. You know, that's... <laughs> So, I mean, I, I love things like that. But, so um, did this palette, oh, oh, look at the views. How do you deal with the views and not blocking them and not having anything fade? Well, we do have, you know, the, behind here, we do have shades that come down, but even with that, things fade. And you have to, I think, so I'm very careful about what fabrics go closer to the window, hmm. with the exception of the leather, the red leather stools. That, that that red leather keeps fading. I've I've, cover, I've covered them twice, so I have little slip slip covers made for them for, for every day. But the red seems to go faster than any other color, and it's not yeah. really quite like that. But we love the way it looks. It's gorgeous. I mean, yeah. it's so dramatic. And and then again, back to the lighting. With yeah. a room that gets this much natural light, you have to be. You know, you know, you know this is this is more of a more important now than ever because somebody, including my house. So many houses being built now with, with emphasis on the windows and the, and the outdoors coming in. Right. Before that, you know, we had normal windows to deal with and right. sunshine pouring into every room wasn't necessarily the goal, but now it is. So, you know, it's just something to be more aware of. I also love the fact that you used these high contrast palette yeah. here because it makes the space seem more contemporary or more modern. Exactly. Where when you look at the elements, they're more traditional. Yeah. And that, you know, that, that's a nice thing about you because what happens when you do a color like this, everything else stands out more. So you appreciate what's, what, what's on top of it, like the artwork or the sconces and, and, and then the chandelier this way. This is also a very big room. So I wanted to make it cozy at night because sometimes it's just the two of them having dinner. Nice. And uh, I just wanted something that, that worked for the two of them or worked for 25 people. Right, you do have to think about how the room is being used and what time of day so that this way it's functional. Yes, exactly. And, um, you, know, you know, to try to always be aware of that. Oh, now uh, here's my big question about being appropriate for where a house is located. And I love the fact that this is a couple from Rhode Island 
that decided to kind of shift gears. And yeah. this is a house in Naples, Florida. And they had another house that um, was not, not, as, not as new as this one and it had a lot of their antiques from Rhode Island in it, and it which were all very nice. And then we were gonna just build an addition to that house and she fell in love, she saw this house and I came, we, she bought it. She, you know, we, we looked at it, she bought it. But you know, the antiques weren't gonna really work and she really wanted to change. They, you know, they wanted a new life together and they wanted something that was just open, easy, and really about, about, the, about the light. And um, we started from scratch. How do you deal with all these different heights of the ceilings so that, cause it can look very vast and the people can feel very miniature. So how do you, you fix that? Sure, well, I try, to, I try to concentrate on what's down below, the lower third. And that's really what, you know, where the detailing is and where the colors are, where the textures are. So I try to make that as inviting as possible. Cause once you, once you start sitting in a room like this, you really are, your eye level is gonna come down anyway. So I try to make that as warm as possible. Interesting. I love that space. And all those windows retract into the wall. Retract into the wall. It was, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice house. I wish I had it. <laughs> Don't we all? I know, right? I mean, the textures are beautiful, but again, they're appropriate for being in Florida. I noticed that there weren't a lot of window treatments. Right. No, I, you know, yeah, I just, I, I try to keep Florida, but you know, I don't, I try not to do like a cliched Florida, you know. With seashells. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no seashells in this house. So, um, but you know. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. I, I, you know, I had to include this picture because of, for many reasons. The first reason is that you have been so generous as a person and you always give back. And I love when designers really embody the whole aspect of philanthropic interest. And this was a great project that you did for the uh, Ronald McDonald House. And it did run in uh, New York Cottages and Gardens. And it's a fabulous room. But when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, it's a little loud. But why don't you talk about why you did what you did? Well, um, this actually started thanks to you because I, I was judging a um, Connecticut Cottage and Gardens contest at, uh, and um, Anthony Barada was on, on, on the team with us. And he mentioned to me, he goes, well, you know, I, I did this Ronald McDonald's house 25 years ago. It's, you know, it needs help. And we we're asking designers to come out and maybe do a room. Would you be interested? So I went out there and there was, you know, lots of bedrooms and sitting rooms and, you know, spaces like that. But they had a Mets room because the owner of the Mets was on the board of Ronald McDonald House out there. Oh. So it wasn't, it was, it was, an, it, was an, it was white walls with a lot of decals on it. No real, no real, except for, you know, a baseball player with a bat. There was no real Mets room. You know, they call it the Mets room, but it wasn't really that, it wasn't designed, I should say. So I, you know, I've done many, I've done 11 show houses, but, I thought if I'm going to do the show house, I, I need a challenge. This is something that I, I will never do again. <laughs> Nobody's going to ask me to do a Mets room again. I mean, I hope they could do now, but you never gonna, know. <laughs> I'll do it. So, um, so, I, so we had three choices. So I put down Mets one, two, and three. So, and then they called me later saying, "We're shocked you want it. We never thought you'd ask for it, but it's yours." So I dealt with the marketing team a little bit for the Mets, and that didn't go anywhere. So I did. I, I decided to do it all on my own. So I found. All these pennants are framed. I found those on eBay. I spent a lot of time on eBay. Wow. And um, Anthony Lawrence Belfair donated the sofa and Schumacher donated the fabric. And so they still had the problem with the car. You know, you know Yankees is easy, Mets is hard. You know, so it, I, this orange and blue combination wasn't easy. Yeah. So I, so I um, and then also just so the deep, little detail I added is these strip moldings. And that's inside there, you'll see that that's, those are the emblems from baseball caps. I found somebody who sold me 20 of them. Wow. And uh, that's, that's up there in the little details and, and the baseball diamond um, underneath the TV. But anyway, um, so I was looking, I, you know, I went to Schumacher and they didn't have this combination. So I, I was up in um, Canaan, Connecticut at Lady Gold Floor Covering. And so I was looking through his books in the back and nothing. He says, well, why are you looking for this combination? I said, well, I'm doing a Mets room. He said, well, it's just Mets carpet. So what Mets carpet? <laughs> so, he pulls, he pulls down this book and it's all these teams have their own carpets, which really the marketing team of the Mets had no idea. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so there was the Mets carpet. And um, 
and amazing made the room it just it was it was and what's really nice about doing this you know i've done 11 show houses and they've all been for great causes i've done five kips bay everything's wonderful and everything adds up but this was a room that was going to be left behind i wasn't taking it out when it was over it's still being used today um Aww. Harry Kravitz just wrote to me not too long ago saying he was there and it looks exactly the same as I left it. And oh. then how kids are still enjoying it and it's full, full all the time. And um, Well, it so, makes me smile every time yeah. I see it. You know, like you want to be in it. It's just fun. It's so much fun. I had such a great time doing it. I'm now a, a, an expert on the Mets. What you don't see here is there's a wall of history of the Mets. So starting back from the polo fields right through today, there's a wall of, wow. of Life magazine covers and things like that. I should have shot that, but it didn't. But, uh, so I, I, I asked me about the Mets. I know everything now. So, this good <laughs> sorry, sorry J Lo's not getting it. But. Oh. Well, um, we have some questions. So let me um, thank you, Matthew. But now comes the hard part. Uh, Let's see what the what they have you. Well, Let's see. Um, Lisa Giles says, I like the table where the green leather chairs are. Where would I find one? It was that beautiful round table that I think is in your office. Yeah, this was, this was it's, it's not an old antique. It's a 1960s piece. Oh, really? I, yeah, I found this many years ago. It's been, you'll see it in my, in my um, last book also next to my bed. But um, it's, yeah, it's a table I keep, I keep traveling with and it's, it's really held up well. And it's a, it's a uh, you know, it's a faux potpourri finish, and um, yeah, I found it. It was done in the '60s, um, late '60s, early '70s, and um, I've had it since like my first apartment. It's fabulous because it's so you can use it anywhere. Yeah, I, I, I've, got, I've got it's been in so many locations, it's been, and I've always used a few show houses. If you look back, this table will pop up. It's like Finding Waldo. You know, it's. A, it's <laughs> So, um, Chloe Sealback asks, what kind of camera do you use, your phone or an actual digital camera? So, you talked about using your iPhone, but do you ever use a digital camera? I do. I have a Sony mirrorless that I use, but, you know, the, the, the images that I really love are, are off the iPhone. Oh. The, dig the digital camera I have, I, I've, take, I've taken nice pictures, but it's, <clears throat> it's very definite. There's, there's not a, it's so crisp, but... The iPhone pictures have a little bit of the old film quality to me. It's a right. little, a little blurry. It's a little bit soft. And back to your theater days. Totally, totally. totally. The other one's great, but it's more like for doc. You know, I, I have these pet projects that I do where I want to document certain things, and that camera's great for that. But the iPhone pictures, I think, I just like the sort of um, the softness they have, especially when they're blown up. Now there is a question here: Are there any circa circa lights in the projects? Oh yeah. Quite there were a few. lot in the Kip Space Show House, I believe. It was well, in the, well, in that in that um, in that um, Holiday House, all the lighting fixtures are, are circa. And that house, that townhouse we talked about when we yeah. talked when they show the owl, yeah. the two lights on the side are circa for sure. Um, in my house, next to the dining table is a circa fixture. So yes, um, circa, circa lighting. You know, we use we're on that website every day. You know, it's always. Do they have a roster of designers designing for them that you can, you know you trust the quality of what's there and and the design integrity, so um, and and it's been it's been really nice. The showrooms are beautiful and easy to work with, and um, so it's been you know it's, it's very much part of what we do. The circle lighting. Um, here's another question: Where did you get the black column in the bonus room that you referenced? It yeah. was that Schumacher I, I, wallpaper. Love right. that. It's, it, it's an Indian co column and it weighs a ton. I just moved it to my new office in Salisbury. And I, I, had to, I had to move it myself. It's solid. Jeez. It's really, it's, it's ebonized mahogany, but it's a solid piece. I found that online from an antique dealer um, and I just trusted that it would be cool and work and it did. And um, now, yeah, it's, it, it's, that's, that's another piece that's probably gonna be, I have a pair of them. Um, there's a pair of those. And uh, that probably, uh, there'll probably be many interiors in the future. <laughs> wow. Um, Mary Taylor asked, could you repeat the Benjamin Moore paint that you used in your house? Yeah, all the trim is Notre Dame. That's well, a Benjamin Moore color story um, paint. And um, I think the walls are just like white dove or something, but, the, but, but Notre Dame is the color. That's the strong color that I talked about. Okay. Notre Dame. Um, Kathleen Peters asks, what do you think of the trend of mixing light fixture finishes in one room, chrome, brass, antique, gold? I mean, do you like to stick with one finish or do you like to mix them up? You know, I, you know, I, do, I, you know, I think 
in general, I would say 80% is one fi finish, but I always think it's nice to, you know, if you have a dark finish mixing up with a brass fixture of some sort, I, I wouldn't get too hung up on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's nice to mix them up, but uh, you just want to make sure it looks organized and thought about. But um, yeah, in general, uh, um, I probably use, like I said, if, if, if it's a lot of fixtures, probably 75% is 75 to 80% is the same finish. And then I, I mix up other finishes within that. Well, our friend Liz Night Nightingale has a question for you. In your home in Connecticut, your house in Connecticut is stunning. What is your favorite piece in your house that has the most history or was a great find? Well, I'm so glad Liz asked that. I didn't set this up. I know Liz. I love Liz. Um, and, and I'm just looking at this cover and thinking, I wish I, wish I talked about that Irish console. Um, it's a beautiful that, piece. That, that was when I, you know, when I worked, when I left David Easton, I had my first project. And my first important piece of furniture that I sold from one of my own clients was from Florian Pat. And it was that console for an apartment on Park Avenue. Wow. I always loved that, and I always wanted a good piece of Irish furniture, but you know, it just never happened. And when I bought this house and I was doing this, I wasn't, this wasn't what was gonna go there. I wasn't sure yet. I probably couldn't find an Asian piece or have a, par a modern Parsons table made for this spot. And my client, um, her husband passed away and she was um, you know, moving everything out of the apartment. And she said, you know, listen, I have no place for this console. I know you've always wanted it. Would you like this for your new house? Oh, I love that. Oh, I know. I just talked this morning and I was telling her, she's just got the book and she called me about it. I'm getting oh, a lot of but so <laughs> No, it was really nice. And we, you know, and she's, she was my first client. It was the first project, first real project I ever worked on and uh, wow. for myself. And uh, so it came, you know, everything sort of full circle. Whether yeah. it's, I love the circle of telling the story, but the, you know, the table, how it comes back to me all these years, my favorite piece of furniture ever. And then the photography, you know, I started in high school doing that. And when I went, decided to be an interior designer, I had to do a portfolio review at FIT. And I didn't know I had to do that. But so all I had was some photographs that I took and some sketches that I did of my room. And I get to FIT to the, and everybody's walking in with scale models and oh. kind of like, I'm gonna be on the bus back to Middletown. This is over with, you know? So the, the teachers were walking around looking at all the portfolios and they got to mine and I see that moving their finger around some of the photographs. So they asked who did it. So I came up and he said, you know, we, we, your portfolio is very weak, but we see something in these photographs and we're going to take a chance on you. Oh, so the photography is coming. You know, everything's coming full circle. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Nice thing about it, doing that. It all weaves together in your story. Um, Eloise uh, a Abrams, has a question how do you ensure balance balance the use of different furniture styles periods without making it so busy and the same question with accessories so you tend to mix a lot of periods so is there a trick to kind of making it look more streamlined or soothing well, yeah, sure. crazy? well you know it's it's about balance it's about balance visually um you know, I, you know, if you have a room with a lot of legs, you might want to balance it with something more solid, like a like coffee table and the ottoman helps quiet down some of the other pieces in that room. Um, that gives it balance, you know, color can give it balance. You know, I, I think all, you know, this, these light colors that I use in my house helps balance out some of the more, you know, elaborate pieces of furniture. They're not that elaborate, but the more traditional pieces. But I think it's about grouping things that are, that feel good together, whether they're similar of color or scale, and it doesn't have to be from the same place. Huh. And um, and just trying to you know come up with combinations that look good. Also, you know what I try to do, and I don't, I'm not really good at this all the time. Is I I don't have to have, have everything I own out at the same time. So I try to put some things away and bring it back later, so it doesn't have that clutter. It's a museum. You bring them in. You put them out. You put in, in theory. In theory. <laughs> theory. Jessica, Jessica Brown has a question. What source do you love for cabinet hardware? Um. Well, we use, um, I just finished probably with Garin. What I like about Garin is, you know, it's expensive, but they have all the classic shapes and, 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 and molds. And, so, and, and they have every price range too. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, expensive, but I, I use them a lot. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll stop on the way home to Katona Hardware. Oh, it's yeah. Got, got a great selection of everything. So, um, so there's a lot out there. The, the good thing about hardware, hardware has gotten much better over the years. It's gotten, you know, there's been awareness of how important hardware is. So I do think it's easier to find hard, good hardware in a lot of places. There's a question here about 
any resource for typical interior recess lighting with a good CRI, your go-to brand? Do you have one? Um, I have to look that up with what we use on a, on a normal basis. Um, but, you know, I just found out, which I'm going to take advantage of, I just found out the circuit lighting has in-house people now helping Technical you with it. Technical help. Technical assistance. And, they, and I'm going to go down and check out because they have new fixtures that I, I haven't seen. And um, like I said, lighting keeps changing all the time. So I don't really want to get caught up with one fixture all the time because things are changing. So I'm anxious to get down there and see what they, what they have and um, take their advice. Well, when you're in Connecticut, come, come down to the one in Norwalk and then we can have lunch. Anytime. I'll do that. Anytime. All right. Um, we have a question from Magdalena Kita. What's your favorite go-to modern furniture? Mm, good question. Well, you know, you know what I really love is, you know, for outdoor furniture, I love Genesis C. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I like, because they have, they have some traditional lines also, but they're, they're, they're contemporary outdoor furniture, really. Some, 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 some of those pieces I can use indoors. Um, you know, uh, for newly made things, you know, it's sort of Holly Hunt still has beautiful things. Um, a knoll. Uh, there's still classics that pop up that are, are timeless and you could still, they still always work. Right. Um, all right, uh, Laura Black has a question. Best advice for mixing antique lighting with modern. I have a period home with some original fixtures, but want to add some clean lines. So mm -hmm. can you help her? Sure. I mean, I do think, you know, if you say, say, say you have, you, you pick your spot. So it's, you know, if it's a dining room, okay, you can, do you want a traditional chandelier and you can do modern sconces inside the room or modern lamps? Um, so maybe one thing or the other is the star. So maybe it's the traditional chandelier is over, over the table and everything else is modern around it. Oh. You know, so balance it out that way so that more emphasis is going, or, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. so, that the, so the emphasis switches to, to that piece that you want to highlight. So there has to be a hero somewhere. Somewhere. A star, yeah. going back to theater. A totally, star totally. Just right in the middle and just light, you know, let that, 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 that be the star and then everything else around it can... Um, and what's nice about that is that, you know, those modern, you say, say you have a traditional chandelier over the, over the table. As you're sitting there having dinner, you start noticing the beautiful modern sconces and things like that. So, not, like I said, not everything has to hit you at once in a room. It's a slow reveal. It's like peeling an onion. It's, you know, you don't totally. want, yeah. yeah exactly. well, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Circa. Thank you, Monticelli Press, for this beautiful book. I encourage all of you to go out and get a copy. And also to um, pick up a, the November issue of Connecticut Cottages and Gardens because you'll see more of Matthew's beautiful, beautiful home in Connecticut. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Gail. I had a great time. It was the best thing I've done in a long time. And I got to sit with my dear friend, Matthew. So thank you. Thank you, Julia.